morning, Twitch, and welcome back. I am Abby. Um, I'm here with Adrian, Bill, and Hello. Roger. Um, Hi. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> um, we are live from the expo floor um, at AWS reInvent. Uh, we'll be streaming all day today on twitch.tv slash AWS. Uh, so come hang out with us for special service announcements, uh, recapping launches that we've already done. We'll have some cool interviews uh, and all that good stuff. Um, so we are here this morning with something extra interesting. Um, so we are talking about our launch from Midnight Madness. Yes. Um, so it's called RoboMaker, and can you guys tell me a little bit about what you launched? Okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll kick, kick it off, Roger. So um, we've been spending a lot of time with customers over the last four years deploying our IoT and Greengrass environment to millions of devices and our streaming capabilities into Kinesis, where we do about 3.3 trillion records a day, something like that, which is hard Ooh. for me to imagine yeah. from all these <laughs> devices out there, and the, and the direct IoT data is a billions per day coming in from these devices. And we found sort of a common thing where there were customers that were building things that sensed, uh, and then, then did some type of analytics or computing on it, like did machine learning or big analytics to determine like, uh, does a compressor need to be serviced or something like that, and then they actuate, like change the speed of the compressor, those kinds of things. And this became a really common theme, sense, compute, actuate. So we were talking about how could we solve this for customers, and if you look up the definition of a robot, it's a device that senses, computes, and actuates. Right. And if you think about things like production control systems and shop floors and what we do in our fulfillment centers and our Kiva robots and, and all the different things we do, we have a lot of experience at Amazon in solving those problems. So uh, we sort of took what we learned from customers and all those other things and pulled together this thing that's very exciting called RoboMaker that lets people build digital twins in the cloud, do massive scale out simulation, and then very securely click a button and deploy it out to thousands of devices. And it deploys out at cloud scale, so you can uh, deploy and stop, deploy and stop, deploy and stop. So it solves a lot of the, the uh, uh, big problems in dealing with robotics or driverless cars. Uh, and all those things. And Roger will talk about all the customers that are already using it, and we have examples of it here on the shop floor where you can interact with robots running on uh, RoboMaker already. Um, so you mentioned simulation a couple of seconds ago. Can you, for those of us that are new to robotics, like <coughs> possibly me, not Adrian, but just me, um, can you tell us a little bit about what simulation is? I'll let Roger talk about that. Absolutely. You know, even before you even build your robot, with simulation you can actually take software that simulates the sensor, or an array of sensors that you might want to use for your robot, and actually see how they're going to perform. Do they give you the right video at the right frame rate? Do they give you the right resolution so the robot can see the room ahead of it? You'll even simulate the actuators, and you'll take that simulation and you'll run it under a variety of conditions carpeted floors, hardwood floors. You can actually turn a physics engine on so you'll actually realize that you're carrying weight, 200, 300 pounds, and simulate exactly how the robot's going to respond, how it's going to process what it's sensing, how it's going to actually send, send controls to the actuator and stop the robot. We've actually provided in a RoboMaker pre-built worlds for houses, for retail stores, for racing tracks, so you can actually put your robot and drop your robot in these environments and see how it's going to respond to the, the things that are around it and to the controls that it's trying to process. We've even got integration with machine learning so the, actual, the robot can actually use simulation to learn through experience. So simulation is used throughout the entire development process. Yeah, I mean, you can learn in the simulation too. So if, say, for example, if your sister has a house full of plants and you don't have any plants, that you can have test your robot with. You could put plants in the simulation and have the robot go around and learn to water the plants and then drop it to your sister's house and it would know how to do that without actually seeing the plant. Which is good because I kill all of my plants. Right, so, right. so it you sounds need like a I robot could, to take yeah, care of that. Yeah, I could get simulation to learn how to care for my plants for my mother and then I could use that. Yeah, well, and I, I think one of the things that's really exciting about RoboMaker that I love that the Rogers team pulled together is you can see the simulation running. You can see the robot sort of with a God's eye view and then you can log into the robot through Kinesis Video and see what it's seeing. Sweet. And then at the same time in Cloud9, you can see all the source code it's going through, you can see all the values of the source code, and then in CloudWatch, you can see all of the different uh, uh, logging thing that's going on. And I think Roger should talk about the cloud integration we've got and a little bit about ROS too. Indeed, um, so on the cloud integration, it's, it's, it's really a game changer for roboticists because no longer are they limited to the compute power or the storage that's on the physical robot itself. No longer are they limited by the machine learning algorithms they could write and put on the robot. They can now take advantage of cloud computing resources 
to store data, to do compute, to computation, and have access to all of our analytics and machine learning services we have in the cloud. Um, we've launched RoboMaker with integration with our machine learning services, our analytics services, and our monitoring services. So you can actually now talk to your robot and it will respond to you through integration with Amazon Poly and Amazon Lex. You can stream video as Bill was describing, LiDAR, radar, stream that to the cloud for analysis and display. Stream it through Amazon recognition so you can actually understand what the, what the video that the, the robot is seeing and it can identify objects. You can actually turn monitoring on and know exactly where your robot is in the world, um, what the log records coming off of it are so you can monitor its performance over time. Um, we believe the Amazon Cloud is going to prove to be the most powerful tool that developers have access to. And then we've integrated it all with uh, Greengrass and IoT and Greengrass is a secure deployment environment. So one of the big challenges, of course, is managing these fleets of robots, patching, upgrading, and especially like if they're running, too. And so with this IoT environment and the shadowing and all those kinds of things, that's all built in under the covers, so you can just click a button and deploy out across your fleet after you've done simulation. And the other thing I think that's really exciting about the simulation is how you can accelerate time. Can you talk about how, how, you, can, oh, how you can make time yeah, faster? Wait, wait, wait. How, 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 do you, yeah. how do you work time in your simulations? Absolutely, the reality is robots can actually respond much faster to things than humans can. So when you're running a simulation and testing your robot, you can actually run it faster than wall clock time. Um, we can run our simulations in parallel. So it's actually possible to not only run a simulation faster than wall clock time, two times, three times, 10 times faster than wall clock time, you can run it in parallel. So if we wanted to simulate our robot with different pets, different room environments, we could actually set all these simulations up in parallel, run them faster than wall clock time, and it's possible to run tens of thousands of hours of simulation in an hour of time. Yeah, which is, which just is amazing. amazing. It's like yeah. large it's really scale maybe testing. It is, yeah. it really yeah, in is. All, in all different types of environments. So if you're do, testing a driverless car, or a drone, or you're, you, know, you, you, could, you could set up you know, uh, thousands of different types of things that you have to have it run through, and then run those in parallel. And the beauty of the cloud, I mean, and RoboMaker, you can just scale, 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 scale. So if you need to get it done really fast, you can scale massively, but you only do it for a few minutes and then scale it down to nothing again, which is, it's, which is really exciting. You, you mentioned a couple of minutes ago, uh, race track. Yeah, yeah. Can I, well, <laughs> can I, can I uh, race? You, you said it's fast, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you, you expand you, on that a little bit. So we have more surprises in store for you this week. We're going to keep a little bit held back right. for, for attendees for the conference, but we do have something to reveal later this week, which oh. is really, really exciting. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. There, there'll be all sorts of different environments. We have a whole team building uh, all, all these different physics models and, and more and more environments. Expect to see outside environments for aerial drones. And we've teamed with company, with organizations like GTRI. And can you talk about all of the education groups that are involved yeah. in this? Because that's a big deal. I'm, I'm really excited by this. Um, you know, where the innovation and advancements are happening, it's in education, it's in research, it's in universities, in robotics. So we are partnering with universities. We have a full array of universities from MIT, Stanford, University of Washington, Georgia Tech Research Institute, a number of universities we're partnering with for both using RoboMaker for both education and for research, and for research as well. We also have a partnership with FIRST Robotics. FIRST Robotics makes accessible learning for robotics available to learners of all ages. Um, as Don Brasi, president of FIRST Robotics, told me, it's not about kids building robots, it's about robotics building the future generation of technology leaders. Yeah, and then, then the other thing I think is really exciting is to, if you could talk about the customers that are already using it. Because this was an interesting project. We built it with customers. In fact, we had customers on our advisory board as we were developing it. So could you talk about that, Ron? Certainly can. Who's using it? It's got some examples. Yeah, so Stanley Black & Decker is using RoboMaker. They're using it for their aerial drones, for actually scanning inspection and, and inspecting um, construction sites as the project's being built, even before the project is being built. Um, NASA JPL has open sourced the Mars rover. So if you want to build your very own Mars rover, you can do so now. It's been open sourced and it's now running on AWS RoboMaker so you can simulate it, extend the source code for it and actually add new capabilities to NASA's JPL's open source rover. We also have robot care systems. They're here at the, and on the show floor with us showing an intelligent robotic walker. This is a brilliant example of how robots are going to enrich our lives. The elderly and disabled can now use Leah, their intelligent robotic walker, to lead more independent and more active lifestyles. 
and now through our integration with our, AW, our RoboMaker ROS extensions, Leah's customers can actually give commands and talk to Leah and give commands to her, Leah, Leah can respond in return. And what a more natural way to interact with something which people are relying upon on a daily basis than just communication through the voice. And I mean, robots, the cloud, we're thinking straight away machine learning and... Yes. So can you explain a little bit how a robot might use machine learning and how the cloud might be the best place actually for that? Right. And, and we actually have a, a demo. Oh. And one of the exciting pieces that we can do is just by using RoboMaker, you automatically get Lex and Polly. Right. That's right. Right, just by using it. So all you have to do is, is, is pull down the RoboMaker, put it on your robot, and instantly you've got voice control. Awesome. We can show you an Can example. we uh, show the video? In fact, this is a demo app we provide, right? That's correct, right out of the box with the service. How fast? Two. Performing command. Moving forward. Jarvis. How long? Turn counterclockwise. How fast? Seven. Performing command. Turning counterclockwise. Stop. Stopping. Go forward. Nine. Moving forward. Stop. Performing command. Rotate clockwise. How fast? Ten. Performing command. Turning clockwise. Rotate clockwise. Twenty. Or a mic's dead. I think it's still on. Turning clockwise. Rotate clockwise. How fast? Yeah, the whole thing is open to the Performing command. Stop. Turning clockwise. LIDAR. Stopping. Go forward. How fast? Nine. Performing command. Stop. Moving forward. Performing command. Stopping. I was going to ask about it, Hi, but we're going to do a question from Twitch first. That's okay. All right. Yes. All right. Cool. We're 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 back. But that the cool thing is that's a really basic demo. But you, later you'll have Comprehend, so you can be much more conversational. There's all sorts of things you can add. Yes. So direct integration with machine learning services and things like this. And yes. they just get it by using RoboMaker. Yep. So we want to talk a little bit about the the open source part of it, right? Yeah. Exactly. I would love to talk about that. In fact, all of the cloud extensions, some of which you just saw we've released out to the open source community as well as the documentation. We're also working as part of the technical steering committee for ROS2. ROS is the robot operating system. It's the open source software most commonly used for robotics. We are contributing to the next version called ROS2 and I, I, we look at it as the Linux of robots, robotics. It'll be the platform on which all commercial robotics is built and our team is actively contributing source code to ROS2, not only the extensions that you have, for, the, for the cloud extensions that we've shown you, but also just to the ROS2 core itself. Very excited by that. It's, it's great to see the, com the community get behind an open source effort like this. So eventually the people on Twitch could uh, build an extension uh, for ROS and yes. have a Twitch command sent uh, directly to the robot. And Twitch is robotics. Yes. Yes. They could absolutely control it that way. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff there. And then last night, you know, we launched the new uh, ARM-based instances, yes. right? So one of the challenges we were having with this is we there's a lot of robots that run on ARM in addition to x86, and we right. were having to do some things to uh, co separately compile that, but now we can put the customers will be able to compile it right on the ARM instance and send the binary directly down. So ARM and x86 will both be supported in, in RoboMaker. So there's no recompiling. Right, that's right. It's very, <laughs> very cool. It's straightforward. Awesome. Uh, I have a question from Twitch, actually. Okay. Um, Cataluna84 says, in simulation, will we have to create the 3D objects and place them ourselves? Ooh, good Ooh, question. That is yeah. a very good question. So, uh, RoboMaker is extensible, so if you actually want to create a new room or a new object, yes, you will have to actually create that, but you can add it easily. But because we're tapping into the open, the open source ecosystem, most of these, uh, there's a library of objects that you can actually pull into your environments. Um, and in fact, if you start RoboMaker right now, you'll actually see you have a Coke can, which you can place into your environment and actually train your robot to follow it around and to, and to find the Coke can in its environment. 
Yeah, yeah. One of the first demos they did for me was garbage collection, and they were doing that in honor of James Gosling, uh, who's, who's, who's working on Java yeah, for us. Exactly. Uh, and the the robot would drive around and find uh, soda cans and pick them up, which was which was very cool. For they, those that didn't get the joke, Java, you, when yeah. you uh, program in Java, you have to deal with garbage collection, and it's uh, historically been a problem. Yeah. yeah so yeah. my question is that in Seattle, can the robot help me figure out which recycling bin of eight? <laughs> the recycling belongs in because I have recycling anxiety when I go to the I'm, office. I'm sure there's a machine learning <laughs> algorithm that can solve yeah, that for just, you. Just for me. <laughs> we'll get right started on that there's right a, away. Thank you. Yeah, but, but, talk, a, but, but wait, talk more about because you've already created like 30 different rooms and there's be much more coming with lots of objects in it for them. Absolutely. Yeah. You can choose from these rooms and in fact we're going to make it very easy for customers to actually bring their own rooms into, the, into our simulator. So you can actually train your robot to operate in your house, in your factory, in your store right. and actually see how it's going to observe or turn a physics engine on and actually see it carrying weight or pushing objects. Yeah. Yeah. There's an interesting question because we talked about machine learning and yes. of course machine learning on uh, AWS is yeah. SageMaker. Yeah. Do we have an integration with SageMaker or what's the idea? Is, uh, um, we'll have more to tell with you later this week. We don't want to, we don't want to spoil everything. Yeah, later, but, later but this week, exciting the, the stuff The future there. is exciting here. Okay, awesome. A good side note, by the way, that this is, it's really only day day two. Yeah. So we no, have- it's still day one. <laughs> still day one. Right. That was an Amazon joke. <laughs> Very funny. It it's literally day, day two of reInvent. <laughs> it is, in fact, always day one. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> um, so there's tons more announcements and, and launches to come this week. So. So stay tuned for all of that. Um, we only have a couple minutes left, or a couple seconds left. Uh, you mentioned a few minutes ago, right at the beginning, about customers. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about anyone that's, that's using this? Oh, well, we already talked about it. Yeah, uh, Stanley Black & Decker, Robart Care Systems are all in public awesome. in production using, using yeah, RoboMaker. Yeah, along with NASA, JP. and what's the hospitality robot down there running? And there's also a driverless truck company running it. Well. Ooh. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot, that there's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, yes. along with GTRIs using it for their aerial drone systems. So there's a lot, a lot going on. A lot of customers yes. already on it. There's an interesting question on Twitch. The uh, RPK to ask: Do we have to design a digital version of our robot to use the simulation, or and is there a tool for that? Yeah, there's actually a rich library of actually pre-built robots that you can actually load into the system. I'll guarantee you that if there is, if it's, if there's a robot that's out there, you're going to find a, a digital copy of it ready to drop into the simulation. Yeah, that's but if nice. you're building a new robot from scratch, or if, say a SCADA system or a, an appliance, yes, we, we will have to work with you. And those, there's tools to build those unique environments. To scan them and can and people bring uh, their digital robot asset from somewhere else into the simulation? Yes. What, yeah? Yes. Yes. Oh, yep. That's all. Oh. So it's a lot of different pieces together, right. all open source. I mean, it sounds like a perfect place for innovation and for, uh, let's say, it's Well, that was the goal, to really accelerate robotics exactly. development the way AWS has accelerated web services development. Right. Yeah, and the cloud and robot is just much made in heaven, yeah, isn't it? It's it, a is, natural it is, fit. really. It's is. a natural yeah. fit. It's good. Awesome. Guys, we are all out of time. Um, thank you so much to Bill and Roger for joining us. Uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Uh, we will be back in just a couple of minutes. Uh, talking about purpose-built databases, I believe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Everybody.